It isn't working. Nice. It works now. Can you make that face again? Knock it off! Oh, see, you can't cover your face while you're driving because you can't see where you're going, can you? Because I'm the most annoying bastard around. What do you got? Yeah, you're good now. I'm not good here. No, you're not good now. Okay, I will tell you good or not. So, anyway. Um, Am I good? You're good now. Good. Okay, so me, Teresa, and Prince William back there. Prince, Prince William. Prince William? Yeah, Prince William. You know why he's Prince William? Because the sun rises and sets in his asshole. Anyway, that's, right. that's a terrible thing to say, but it's true because she just, true. you know, she spoils him. Her and her mother are like spoiled Dean Gerardo. Didn't you know that? Her mom was really flustered today when he went outside in the in the in the driveway in his stocking feet. No, I actually didn't have socks on. He was just barefoot. Barefoot. And uh, she's freaking out because it's cold. And I'm like, it's okay. It'll get cold. It'll come in. You get tired of it, right? Yeah. Yeah. Mama can't handle that crap. It's a Filipino thing. But anyhow, it's like your roof blew off of that. Uh, we are on our way to get a battery for the wood miser. Yes, the wood miser. Now I. I kind of don't want to make this video, you know. I do and I don't because I like my wood miser and I enjoy it very much when I do use it. But I have not pulled it out of that building in a couple of it's been a couple of years, couple hasn't of years, it? Yeah. It's been a while. But the battery in, in the in the thing, it was brand new in. I think that thing says seventeen in twenty seventeen, and I haven't had a problem with it. Every once in a while, I go in and I start the, the thing up and I let it run for a few minutes just to maintain the battery and do its thing. Well, <sighs> I went to start the battery just a couple few days ago and it didn't work out. And I decided that I would put the jumper cables on it. I still couldn't get the sound bitch to fire up. So I had to go on jump start mode on the battery charger and that got it started and uh, I moved the head rig up Ooh, watch it I moved the head rig up and I moved it forward so that I could uh, get to the battery because it is underneath it is on the head rig uh, drive side of it is down low uh, I, I gotta tell you about that thing too um, what thing? that thing I came up here with that to look at. Uh, so anyways, the head rig, the battery, I get the battery off of there, and I had another battery that I bought last April, and we used it a little bit. It was in the uh, fuel t in the fuel pump house. So the fuel, the fuel farm, as you want to call it, but anyways, it was in there, and my idea didn't work out as well as I'd like it to, so all we do now is just use the the cables that come with the 12 volt battery hook them to the tractor or whatever we're fueling up and bada bing bada boom we've got we got power and life's good you know uh so that battery was sitting in there and there was no use to it whatsoever so i put it in the sawmill same problem same problem it's a junk battery uh one is an x side battery the other one is a napa battery both of them are garbaggio right so I'm on my way now to Interstate. Right, Teresa? Yeah. I'm on my way to Interstate. I'm going to get a deep cycle, 12 volt, 1,000 cold cranking amp battery for my sawmill. If I cannot get this, I'm going to find an Optima, build, uh, an Optima battery dealer, which I do believe they have one. There's Buaya. Um, you know and i'm gonna put that dry cell in there and hopefully i don't have any problems with it i know there's people that use them and they last very well that's a dry cell battery so you can't spill a dry cell right it's, it's because it's dry oh so anyway that's the that's what's going on here today uh did call woodmiser yesterday and i got the parts that i had broke when I was taking the battery out, I dead shorted the positive side like a dumbass. I didn't unhook the negative and I dead shorted it, blowing a 225 amp fuse, cooking a resistor and a diode for the, oh, excuse me, <laughs> solenoid that runs the hydraulic system. So I was on the phone to the parts guy yesterday, parts guy, Doug, good guy. 
very helpful, very informative, very willing to get me the parts that I need. He knew who I was, the name of the, the number of the mill, everything just by my phone number. It was awesome, great experience. But then he sent me over to Justin. Now Justin is the electronic guy. He's the diagnost, electrical diagnostic dude. And apparently when I was taking the battery out, the old battery out to put the new worthless battery in, uh, when I grounded it out blowing those fuses, I also tripped an accessory breaker, which I did not know. I knew where they were. There was four of them up on that box. And then there is another four or five of them up on the AccuSet. If you know what I'm talking about, go to woodmiser.com and check out AccuSet 2 controls. And underneath there, there are breakers. They're little button breakers. They're nothing. So anyways, I called him up and he says, well, sounds to me like you've got a dead short in your ground wire. A dead short in the ground. Well, that doesn't make any sense. Uh, maybe a dead short from the positive wire to the uh, mill where it is grounded. Yeah, I could go for that, but no. Uh, he says, well, if you leave your mill outside and it can be, you know, it gets rusty and the mice get in it and they, and it's, it's obvious to me that that's your problem. It wasn't the problem. It was the breaker. What a condescending asshole, if you ask me. So Justin at Woodmiser, if you ever see this video, try to be a little more mm, I don't know what would you say more people friendly not such a stuck-up douchebag I mean really uh, you wouldn't even listen to what I told you and when I tried to explain it to you you got a little bit like you knew more than I did and I'm not stupid believe me by no means am I dumb and I know all about my mill because guess what? It's my mill and I know where the wires go. I know that it's never spent a night outside. Never. Not once. It's never been rained on. It's never been left out. It's just, ah, it's a building machine, right? Yeah, yeah. It stays in the building, well, well cared for, well oiled and well taken care of. But my problem is that I let it sit for too long between uses. Well, now that I need it, and I really need it, I, there's a lot of things I need to do, which I will be bringing the YouTube world along with. So, anyways, I guess I've yammered on, and uh, yeah, so if you own a wood miser and you speak with Justin at wood miser, he's the electrical guy, either you've been treated like an asshole by him, or he was just in rare form, but for the most part, if I ever talked to him, oh, I tried calling him back. Believe me, I got on the phone and I tried calling him back and uh, I even tried twice because I was going to get a hold of Doug, the dude that helped me that was actually really good, the parts guy, Doug. Uh, you're okay this way? Still okay. Um, I tried calling Doug back, but the phone was busy and I waited for 15 minutes. It took me that long to realize that he isn't worth this much time. And I just hung up and now I'm talking to you guys. But anyways, uh, we are going to go to get this battery and I will meet you at the mill. Okay, so here's the wood miser. Uh, I backed it in here with the dust on it. I didn't even blow it off uh, just because. <laughs> There's no real reason for it. Um, I am going to be replacing, I'm replacing this battery. The battery I had in here it's not a cheap battery. That's what really pisses me off. That that is an Exide battery, right? Although, it only had 675 marine cranking amps. Uh, it is a marine and RV battery. Don't buy these for this application. Uh, buy the straight marine battery. This is the other battery, which, as you can see, was 419 right there. That's a Napa battery, which I believe is also an Exide battery. If it's not, it's a DECA. I'm not 100% sure. But these batteries, I charged them up, and they do, they're on the, they're on the cuffed of being wrong. They're just on the, they're just of being bad. Uh, the one is a 17, 2017, and this one here is brand new. I just went over to the store here 
Uh, let's see. I'm gonna get you up there where I can see. You can see me. Um, I just went over to the Interstate store, which yes, they have them, and I bought this one. Uh, what do you call it? Wood miser requires what they say they require is a a uh, uh, think about it, a thousand cold cranking amp marine battery. Well. When you talk to these guys like Interstate or any of the other companies, they're like, what are you talking about? They don't, I don't think they make a thousand cold cranking amp marine battery. You know, they, we, what we have is a 800 uh, cold cranking amp marine battery, but we don't know much about anything other than that. So you probably got something special. Well, I, I have a tendency to agree that it's something that Wood Miser has either uh, procured, oh Jesus, I, specifically for their uh, their sawmills, or it's just something that they decided they would. Oh my God! Already, I just want to take this strap off of here. See if you. All right, all right. Watch this shit. Ready? This carry handle is just a waste of my time. They get in the way. They really do. They just get in the way of everything. And I don't care for them. So I've taken the carry handle off. Yeah, they're convenient and stuff. A lot of them you can just take right back out. Uh, but yeah, this one here should peel off like that. There we go. And then I'll just set that up there because I got brand new things. All right. So. Positive is always to the right on these. And uh, yeah. It is a thousand cold cranking amps. Okay, so I do have the proper one. Look, it says marine cranking amps is 1,000. So this is the proper battery for you know, The guy didn't know what he was talking about. Maybe he did, maybe he didn't. I don't know. Let me get this thing right. You look at my face. <coughs> anyway, I got a cough and no fever. I threw up yesterday, which is kind of weird for me. But, uh, you know, just it happens, you know. The uh, I got some new parts coming as well. Uh, what happened when I took the battery off, I dead shorted the, I dead shorted the, uh, the, the wrench that I was using. This wrench here, if you can see it right there. Dead shorted it against frying a resistor and a diode yep cook that sucker you just cooked it so anyhow i'm gonna put this stuff oh, these all on here correctly uh always put the i guess you put the positive one on first because if you're putting on the neck if you put the ground one on first you're gonna have a problem there so i put the positive one on first that way if i do oh well, just ain't that just freaking wonderful? Different size wrench. I'll be back. Okay, so I'm back. So you can short that out now, as long as you don't have the ground hooked up, and then it's gonna spark. So that was my mistake, number one. Uh, anyway, when I shorted that out, apparently it did something to the resistor. This is the resistor that goes in this wire that is here on the ground, and what that did to my machine was it what these resist this resistor does and there's a diode that goes there's a solenoid in here the solenoid is designed to run at oh 12 volts the alternator runs at the alternator runs at a uh, at 14 and a half volts. So what Woodmiser decided or figured they should do is pretty simple. Uh, they decided that it would be best if, and it's a good idea, if they would put these re this resistor and the diode. Uh, a resistor will only allow a certain amount of voltage to go through your go through to the battery go through to the uh, a device and the and a diode 
will only allow electric to go one direction. So that's that's what they're for. All right. So it, it cooked the diode or the resistor or whatever, both of them. It caused this issue. It cooked them both. This this resistor was turning red hot, like red hot, burned me red hot after I had shorted it out. So the yeah, yeah that would I would have shorted that out again too, like a dummy. Anyway, um. So when that happened, it caused a pain in the ass. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna go over to the whip mill, and it has a glow plug once it gets down to a certain temperature. Uh, everything is working properly. And once that little glow plug or heater shuts off, I'll give it a kick over and hopefully she starts. Here we go. right off which is really nice uh, before those two batteries they're just absolute garbage uh, it'll only take a few minutes for that thing to reach its full charge and uh, you know that, that it'll be good but the, uh, I need to run the mill because I'm going to be building a new building out here out at the uh, other end where the bunk feeder was I'm going to take the old bunk feeder out and we're going to build a 30 by 75 or a 30 by 80 building uh, to back in tractors, wagons, balers, and whatever else I can stuff in there. Uh, 80 feet, you know, that'll leave me with approximately eight days, eight days to put equipment in. So if I put the uh, posts on there at 10, on 10 foot centers, then, you know, 10 foot centers, I'd be all right with that. And I can put eight, I could put eight days. Plenty of room with 10 feet. I can put my stack wagon in. I can, put, I can just put everything I need to put in. Those two new gravity wagons that I bought, those will fit under in one bay. You know, just really utilize some space around here. Now, I have to go to the township and get a demolition permit, I think, and a uh, building permit to redo it. Because I want to do it correctly. Uh, when we built this building, they used a thing called uh, permacolumn. And the perma columns are here, right? So they're concrete. And this metal piece here has rebar that goes all the way down in there. And I think there may be another. I thought they bought two of those things. Uh, and I thought it was here. Maybe it got buried in here. Who the hell knows? I don't know. But anyways, those perma these metal pieces, these go all the way down into the bottom of this eight foot perma column. And uh, you drop that. I think it's eight feet. There might be only six feet. I can't remember. Anyway, that perma column, and then you just fasten it to, they've got three two by sixes, and that's exactly what I would be doing, buying the perma columns. And I don't know how much they are a piece. I'm gonna call them. And uh, here it is, perma column, 6,300. Uh, without the boards, uh, I know when they built the building, they bought them with with those that steel, or with the, the two by sixes. Uh, I don't need that because I've got the wood miser. That will all be hardwood, like oak, when I do it. On another note, when you short out uh, electric to uh, your nuts and bolts and shit, it screws them up. So you kinda wanna clean those threads. You know, I just cleaned that thread, so we're good. Let's hopefully this thing fits on there. Again, I it probably because I cross-threaded the damn wing nut. Nah, we're good. All right, so we're good there. I'm gonna chase this one here too. I don't know if you can see it, but oh, wrong side. Sometimes you got to do this stuff, you know. Sometimes, so you just kind of. Chase those threads out of there, even though I know this one is not screwed up. Sometimes you chase them with a a die or a tap. That's a die. 
Let's see if this guy goes on. Oh, no, it doesn't want to. So this one here, for whatever reason, this wing nut wants to be a pain in the ass. But it's no big deal. It's just a matter of possibly it's not threaded on there, right? Nope, oh, I need a problem. Ah. So we find our quarter, quarter NC, quarter 20. Ah. And you run that through there. All right. Somebody said you got a you got tools, man. <laughs> you know, there's more tools in that shop than anybody's got any idea. To be quite honest with you, so because these wing nuts are like cheap, crappy metal, they're not. I think they're steel, but they just seem like cheap, crappy metal to me. But quarter twenty wing nuts, that was easy enough. I just did that by hand and boom and sawdust and crap gets in there wow that worked out pretty good so we're good there uh, this kit that I'm using right here and I'll show you in a little bit but I got this I actually got this thing from it's a husky I got it from uh, uh, yeah Home Depot and the first time Cody Cody used it, he put the he put it on this way, which is fine. The problem was he was pushing down, and he actually had the guts come flying out of there, and I pretty much forbid him from using it <laughs> because he screwed it up. But anyway, I got a phone call.